Right, so getting down to the figures, I've got my handy dandy piece of paper. Gross, although the pigs might think those curly fries are yum. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or for those that are new here, hey, my name is Alicia. So me and my husband bought a beautiful 10 acre property here in the Waikato about four years ago now, where we have been slowly transforming it um, to live more of a self-sustainable lifestyle. So you name it, we've been putting in big veggie gardens, big home orchard, we've got lots of animals here, we've got our chickens, so we get many delicious eggs, we've got our pigs, sheep, calves, and of course, we've got my horses. So because we only had 10 acres, we were looking for animals that didn't require a lot of space. So obviously pigs are a perfect fit for us. Um, many of you followers, I'm sure, are in the same situation as us. A lot of you have small amounts of land or a small lifestyle block and you're looking at ways to make a bit of side income on your property. So pigs are definitely a good idea. Because we only had 10 acres, we were looking for animals that didn't require a lot of space. So obviously pigs are a perfect fit for us. Um, many of you followers, I'm sure, are in the same situation as us. A lot of you have small amounts of land or a small lifestyle block and you're looking at ways to make a bit of side income on your property. So pigs are definitely a good idea. Okay, so today's video I'm making is about the economics behind pig rearing, a small scale pig rearing business. I have had a lot of private messages since I made my previous video on our setup um, about our pigs, just asking what we make, is it worth it, heaps of questions like that. So today I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to make a video to let you know sort of the economics behind our pig rearing business, what we make, um, what the money goes towards and everything like that. So yeah, I hope everyone here can take something away from this video, whether you're looking at getting into pigs or you've got a small lifestyle block and you're kind of thinking to yourself, what can I do to make a bit of side income? So yeah, this video is definitely for you. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and let's get right into it. All right, so first up is the setup. So you definitely want to get set up before you get your pigs. The most economic way I can think of to make a cheap pig pen is using corrugated iron. It is really simple, you don't need to know your fencing knots and it is everywhere. You can hit up your local roofing companies, people are always re-roofing their houses and they always have long sheets of iron available. I always see it on Facebook Marketplace and Trade Me as well. So yeah, get some iron, you can use your pre-existing fences if you want to use a big paddock for your pigs. Just simply nail the iron across your fences and then voila, you have a pig pen. Another cheap, affordable way is using electric tape. So the only issue with this method is that obviously when the power is off, the pigs know that it's off and the pigs may get out. Um, also when using electric fencing, that system, the pigs require training. You can't just put your pigs in a electric tape and expect them to stay in there. They, when they get a shock, I have noticed in the past, you'd think if they get a shock they'd freak out and run backwards, but they don't. When they get a shock they freak out and run forwards through your fencing and then they're out in your paddock. And believe me, it is a mission to get them back in because they are very smart and they remember where that electric shock came from. But in saying that, electric tapes are very affordable, but you will also have to look at an electric fence unit. Um, I recommend solar power if you are going to choose this method. The setup that we chose was an eight wire sheep netting with two electric wires along the bottom. This is a very affordable way, much cheaper than the old um, seven wire post and batten, because battens now are getting up to like $2 each, even more probably. Here's the example of the netting that we use. Um, we bought this one from Farmlands. It is a, a 100 meter roll, 90 centimeters high, and 30 centimeter spacing. On the screen up here, the prices of netting. Um, my husband is very good at fencing, very good at fence knots, so that is why we chose that um, system. We didn't use corrugated iron, just simply our pig area was quite large and it was just as quick to just roll out um, the netting. So we also, if you can see behind me, used the old um, post and rail. This is definitely, I think, the most expensive way to go, um, but we did that so we could control the height of the fence when feeding them. Because if you think, if you've got a fence this high, it's quite hard to get that bucket over the fence to put it in the troughs below 
and also in future we're planning on putting a race along the front so we just set that up um, ready for that as well. So yeah if you're not confident in your fencing skills, tying knots and everything like that then definitely stick to your corrugated iron. I think that is the most economical, cheapest way to go. And now moving on to the farrowing huts. There is so many options out there that what you can use farrowing huts. So we use just recycled timber, recycled um, iron as well, so it pretty much costs us nothing to make. Another option that I used to use back in the day was tilter doors. So I'll try and find some photos of when we use these tilter doors just to show you kind of what it looks like. Um, so the way it worked was that one end of the tilter door would prop up and sit on top of a seven wire fence and then a tilter door has two swinging arms and those are used to prop it up and dig them in the ground. So because one of our paddocks literally looks like a pile of doors, sheds, tin etc from Jaden doing his garage business we always have tilted doors. Okay so hopefully this shows you it a little bit easier sorry it's set up terribly I just chucked it up here just to give you a rough as example of what it looks like so yeah you just have the arms in the ground at the front and then you sit the back up on a fence I couldn't find the videos of when um, my pigs were under the tilted doors so this will just have to do just to give you a rough idea of um, what it kind of looks like. Don't forget you can get massive tilted doors like this one. Um, that's the size of it in comparison to our ute. So they do come in really handy, um, especially if you need something to whip up very quickly. This was a really, really cheap way. You can always find tilted doors on Trade Me for pretty much free. My husband does do a garage business, he relocates garages, so we always have um, tilted doors around. So tilted doors are really easy, just in the fact that if the pigs farrow in the middle of the paddock, you can pretty much run out there with a tilted door, prop it up on the fence, and boom, you have a shelter. Another cheap affordable housing is tanks. So old split water tanks, and just cut them in half, and then you have kind of like a pig igloo. I have seen that used in the past. Also, if you have a barn or anything like that already set up, you definitely can use that. You can always move your pigs towards the area that you want them to farrow in. No worries, if you have food, the pigs will be following you. So you can just set up your old barn just with gates to create separate pens for the sows and just make what you have work for you. So when it comes to farrowing pens and everything like that, we also have to buy gates. I highly, highly, highly recommend using just a three foot gate. Don't go putting 12 foot gates in pig pens. The reason behind this is that pigs don't move like sheep and cows. You can't just shoo them away. They will just stand there in the way. And if you're trying to open a big 12 foot gate and close it and the pig's standing in the way, it literally is just impossible. So definitely stick to your three foot gates. You can just open it, hop in, hop out. So our gate that we have, you probably can't see it from here. We've just used vertical bar gates so the piglets can't quite fit through and they were $110 each from Farmlands. And while we're talking about extras, just the straw that we use. So we use straw for the pig bedding, don't use hay, just don't use it. It's not the same as straw, the aeration isn't the same and you end up with a big mouldy mess. So a bale of straw here at the moment is around $14 a bale. We bought I only think like five bales and it goes really really far. A little segment like that you can puff out in their um, hut and yeah it lasts really really long. So yeah don't forget about the cost of straw. Okay so next up is buying the pigs themselves. There is a few different options. You can buy wieners which are six to eight weeks old. These normally sell for around 90 to about $180 even. You can buy porkers, which are about four to six months, and they sell for about two fifty, give or take. Um, you have baconers, which are eight to ten months; these are more around three hundred, three fifty. Or you have empty sales, which are around three fifty. Or you can even buy an in pig sale, which is about five hundred to six hundred dollars. So we went with wiener piglets. The reasons behind that was they are the cheapest, obviously. They are easy to transport, to pick them up you just use a dog crate or whatever and also we wanted to bring them up with us to make sure they aren't going to be aggressive later on 
we have had so many piglets in the past be aggressive with piglets so that was definitely a big thing for me. I wanted to rear all my piglets up from a young age so they knew me and I knew them and there wasn't going to be any hassles around farrowing time. We bought our wiener piglets for $110 each. We pay, did pay a little bit more for our boar and he was $150 but that's because he is pretty much a purebred Berkshire so at the end of the day it depends what breed you go with. Um, as to what they are going to cost you. But on average, I'd say you'd get a pretty decent wiener for around, yeah, $120. Okay, so the other options, you have the porkers and baconers. The plus side to those is that they are ready to put to the boar straight away, which can be economic because you don't have to feed them for that extra period of time as you get wieners when they're only eight weeks old. So that is a big um, jump. It's just the transport. Transporting them is a bit of a mission and you haven't been um, brought up with them so you don't exactly know what their personality is like. Um, another option, like I said before, is buying an empty sow. So empty sows are quite affordable, but in the past I've just always had issues with this. I've thought to myself, well, why would you sell a perfectly good breeding sow if it was any good? So the ones that I've bought have either been older sows, they don't produce many piglets, or if they do produce piglets, they end up rolling on them, or they are aggressive with their piglets, and that is, I think, the main one. You just do not want an aggressive mother when they have piglets, because they can be damn scary when they're chasing you if you get in the pen with their piglets. Um, okay, so the last option is buying an in-pig sale. I have done this in the past, and it actually has been quite good. It's good for those people who don't want to have a boar on the property. It's um, like a quick quick money maker I suppose. You can even get in pig sows that are ready to drop within three weeks. So you buy the in pig sow, you only feed it for three weeks, it has all its piglets, sell all the piglets and make your money straight away. I mean of course you don't come across these often. Um, you do come across them when people are like closing down their piggery business and everything like that. You just got to be careful when you transport pregnant sows. Sows can become stressed very, very easily. We did actually lose a sow once, which was devastating. I was only 15, and it was the day before she was due to have her piglets. It was like one of the hottest days that we've ever had in New Zealand, and unfortunately she died of heat stress. There I was sitting as a 15-year-old trying to cool her down with a hose, and she ended up having a seizure in front of me, and unfortunately passing away. So yeah, um, that's just a little side note to add about um, the heat with pigs and moving those pregnant cells. So yeah, but like I said before, if you don't want to have a boar on your property, this can be a really good option for you. But I will be doing a lot of videos on this. I have so much knowledge and a lot of experience with pig rearing and all different kinds of pigs. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the most expensive part of pig rearing and I'm sure you guessed what it's going to be and that is the feed. Pigs actually don't need as much feed as you think. They only need 2 kgs a day on average, but of course that depends on the conditions of your pig. But our pigs are only needing 2 kgs a day, which is not actually that much. Of course when you have lactating sows and they have lots of piglets on them, they do need a lot more. I mean some of our sows I think we're having 2 buckets a day at least of feed. Um, especially when the piglets get older they need even more, so just bear that in mind. Um, also if you have young pigs and you're growing pigs, they also require a lot more feed than just maintaining a healthy weight. So of course free feed is best, don't you think? So as soon as I found out we were getting pigs, I jumped on the phone, rang up all the local cafes, restaurants, takeaway shops, veggie stores, supermarkets, just everywhere, calling up um, asking if they have free food waste available. So with this, I pretty much drop off a few buckets to these places and do a pig run every couple of days. I make sure I supply them with a bin, a bin with a lid or otherwise I use the 40 litre rubbish bins that you can get from the warehouse or Mitre 10 which works real easy if they have a big amount of food. Here's an example of what the bins look like. We've got the 40 litre rubbish bin on the left and the normal bucket on the right. And just to show you what the scraps look like if you're curious, gross, although the pigs might think those curly fries are yum. But luckily we've got chickens that help clean up the scraps. Or steal it.
I will put in here though a disclaimer about MPI rules in New Zealand. If you are going to be getting feed off cafes and restaurants, you have to make sure that there is no raw meat in your pig food. Make sure all the meat is cooked and if there was raw meat, it's not allowed to contaminate all the other food waste. So yeah, just make sure when you're when you're organising your picking up the pig feed and that, just make sure they're only putting cooked meat into the bins. Um, if they do put raw meat in the bins or if the feed in the bins, if the food waste in the bins have been in contact with raw meat, then you'll have to boil it to 100 degrees for several hours to kill any anything that it can have on it so yeah who wants to waste time doing that so just make sure when you um, set up these cafes just that they only put raw, raw that they only put cooked meat in your pig bins all right so there's so many other options of feed out there a big one is milk so many dairy farmers have have free milk sitting around either their spare colostrum that they're not using or they've accidentally milked a penicillin cow and put it in the vat and they need thousands of litres to be picked up that day. So milk, I think, is a very cheap way of feeding your pigs. The only issue with this is, of course, transporting it, picking it up. We just use a thousand litre pods and pump it out of their vat. You can pick up these pods for about $100 each. And then also when you get home, we sit that, we sit that pod up high so then you can use the tap to fill up your buckets and feed the pigs. However, this can become very thick and gross really easily in the summer. So if you are thinking about getting milk for your pigs, just remember don't get a big quantity when you're first starting out. If you've only got one pig, you don't want to have a thousand litres of milk sitting around that will take you months to get rid of. Here is a perfect example of what the milk does when it gets all rank. So yeah, imagine that if that was in a pod. Because it is a blimmin' pain to clean. I remember one of our vats actually we left it the milk sitting in there and oh my god cleaning it out it stunk it had like a big crust along the top and went to get in there and scrub it and hose it out so yeah you just want to use your milk before it gets to that level um if you will be paying for milk if you can't find anything any milk around for free the going rate for milk is 10 cents a litre and if you are wanting colostrum you're paying around that 20 cents a litre Another couple of options is avocados. I'm sure you must have read, pigs can't have avocados, but that is bull. <laughs> I've been feeding avocados to pigs for years and I've never, ever, ever had an issue. So yeah, we get avocados like this. Um, there's so many avocados around at the moment, just especially from windfall avocados. Um, the pigs fight over them because they love them so much. Of course, don't feed avocados to any other animal. Don't feed them to horses, it can kill them. Sheep, cows, no, no, no avocados for them. But pigs, on the other hand, I've always fed um, avocados. The piglets absolutely love it. There's always avocados out there, especially in the, last, in the last week, we've had like a hurricane or whatever it was come across New Zealand, and there's so much windfall fruit. So a neighbour of mine has an avocado orchard. I just asked her, could I just drive, a, drive around with the trailer and pick up all the avocados off the ground? Of course, you do have to wait for them to ripen. You can't feed the pigs the um, green avocados. So yeah, apart from avocados, there's also kiwi fruit. Kiwi fruit is perfect in winter. In winter, normally cafes and, and restaurants are much quieter and we don't get much feed. So we will ring up our local kiwi fruit places and ask them if they have any kiwi fruit available. You can normally get a trailer or a pallet full. Some are pains and make you buy a truckload. I do not recommend that. It, honestly, it will take you forever to get through it. It all ferments in 
yeah, it just is a really bad smell. It attracts rats and everything. So if you are getting kiwi fruit, um, get it in small quantities. Or even another option is ring up a farmer. A lot of farmers feed their cattle kiwi fruit. You could probably ring them up and say, hey, could I come pick up a, just a trailer load of kiwi fruit for 20 bucks? And I'm sure they'll be happy for you to do that. I'm sure there is so many more options out there depending on where you live. I know Hastings has so many apples available. I always see them advertising truckloads of apples. So if you're in Hastings and have a lifestyle block, definitely chuck some pigs on your land because, I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, Alright, so moving on away from the fresh food, if you have to, you can buy pig pellets. If you're going to be buying pig pellets, pig pellets, I recommend buying it in bulk lots. So buying at least a ton, um, 50 bags worth. So you can ring up your local farmland store, PGG Wrightson's, um, Farm Source, whatever whatever one's closest to you, and arrange that with them. It is much cheaper buying it in bulk. It also saves you petrol, um, you don't have to travel to them from the store picking up singular bags and it's just there, ready for you and it just makes it a lot easier. So the one that we've bought is NRM Big Pig Nuts, it's speci specially formulated for pigs. I think we got it for around $24 a bag, we're buying it in the ton, whereas if you were buying singular bags from the store it's up like $28 each. So yeah, you definitely save a bit of money um, buying it by the ton. You can also hit up your farmland stores for any ripped bags. They definitely discount bags that are ripped or damaged. They also get dust mite in the summer, which is a big problem in the farmland stores. I know this because I used to work in a farmland store and dust mite is bleh, it's a pain. Oh my god, I just saw the biggest rat of my life. <gasps> Ooh, I'm gonna see if I can video it. Hang on a second. Okay, it's gone. But that was like this big. So I guess that is one positive to buying pellets. You don't get as much rats around when you are buying like scraps and feed and food waste and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, I was saying you can get um, bags for a discount if they have dust mite in them. So just ring up your local farmlands and just ask them and let them know, put it out there that you have pigs and if they ever have any damaged bags or feed that is contaminated by dust mite um, that you would like to buy it. But just bear in mind dust mite spreads through everything so if you do get a pallet of pellets with dust mite um, just keep it separate from all your other stock food. Pigs also eat things like nuts. We've got a massive chestnut tree here and if you're curious to know what a chestnut looks like they are these prickly looking balls. The pigs are actually really smart and they stamp, stamp on them to get the nut out. So if you're wondering what all these spiky things are on the ground, those are chestnuts. I have seen some people contact local councils asking if they can pick up all the chestnuts that are just all in parks and things like that. So that's another option if you've got chestnuts close by. And also the most affordable economical way of feeding your pigs is pasture. If you do have the land to pasture feed your pigs then by all means definitely do that. Pigs do eat pasture. I think a lot of people don't know that, that how much pasture pigs eat. Um, when we move them to a, a new paddock or a new area they just go hard on the grass. So yeah, pasture is definitely the most economic way to go. There's also your own household waste of course and also you could ask friends and family to save any food waste they have and even your veggie garden. If you're growing a row I always just grow extra because it will never go to waste right. We always grow cucumbers and zucchinis for the pigs because I'm sure you all know those things grow like crazy. So we'll always give the excess um, to the pigs. And like, like I said before we had like a cyclone come through in the last week so I just put a post up on Facebook asking anyone if they had any windfallen fruit and I got so many replies of people just all offering me just big buckets of um, windfallen apples and pears and plums and everything like that. Here's a bin of pears that was kindly donated to us. So yeah, take the opportunity um, wherever you can. Now of course when you're picking up feed you need buckets. The cheapest buckets is if you ask a restaurant, they always get their food in food grade buckets and you can get these for about $3 each for the lid. I used to go to Mitre 10 because that's where I thought you could buy a bucket from and that was the only place. 
but minor 10 buckets and warehouse buckets or um, anything like that are more like $13. So yeah, definitely hit up the restaurants, ask them for spare buckets, even old paint buckets. Um, yeah, it really saves you money when you're not buying them from minor 10. Another big expense that goes along with picking up feed is petrol. And I'm sure everyone in New Zealand has seen those petrol prices skyrocket. I think it's like $3 a litre of um, petrol at the moment, which is just ridiculous. So yeah, um, to help with petrol costs, obviously try and fit in your um, pig food pickups with when you're going to town anyway, and also try and talk to all the different cafes and that to try and pick it up all on the same day so you're not doing any unnecessary trips into town. Right, so now that we've talked about all the outputs, what we spend our money on, so mainly feed, pretty much the setup costs, and that's pretty much it. Let's talk about what money comes in when we sell our piglets. Okay, so we sell our piglets when they are weaners, when they are eight weeks old, and we sell them for $140 each. So we decided to keep them for that extra two weeks because you can sell them from six weeks. Um, but by keeping them to the eight weeks, we get that little bit extra and sell them for $140. I think if you're rearing to only six weeks old, you get more around that $110 figure. A lot of factors does obviously play into this. Um, the biggest one is food availability. Um, and the condition of the sow. If the condition of the sow is deteriorating, we will sow the piglets earlier, because obviously the older the piglets get, the more they feed off their mums, and then the mums can lose condition quite quickly. And then same with the feed. If we don't have the feed around, or if they've had their piglets in winter, then we sell them early as well. So yeah, that's another side note. Try and plan your litters around the food availability. So of course, summer is the best time um, for your sows to have their piglets because there's so much food around. So pigs have two litters a year for those who didn't know that. Their gestation is three months, three weeks, three days which is super weird but really easy to remember. Three, three, three and it is correct. Okay so they have two litters a year and the average litter size, I read on the internet is only seven and a half but in my experience the average litter size is ten piglets in my opinion. So pigs have 14 teats so if they have any more than 14, you do need to take the piglets off the mothers and hand raise these. I have actually had to do this in the past, but not because of the extra teats, but because the mum kept rolling on them. But in today's video, I'm not going to be talking about hand rearing piglets and cost of that. Um, I will put that in another video for you guys. I know friends who have had pigs that have had 18. Um, and of course, their first litters, they always have a lot less, and normally around six. So the last litters that we had, it was first litters and we had two that had six, one had seven and one had ten which was actually amazing for her first litter. So when you're thinking about getting into pigs just remember their first litters are not going to be that many piglets, you're not going to make that much um, profit but later down the track you will make more of a profit when your pigs um, produce a lot more piglets. Um, and on another side note, we're having a lot of these side notes but I will make more videos on this in more depth. Um, pigs have the most amount of piglets in their first six litters. So usually people get rid of pigs when they're around three years old after they've had the first six litters. Um, normally, the main reason actually is because the pigs get too big and start squashing their piglets and their reproductive um, rate lessens. But yeah, I will do more videos on everything about pig reproduction and things like that. And of course, you've got to take into account the loss this year, one of the pigs, we've lost four piglets because I wasn't there when she was giving birth. She only ended up with two piglets because four of them all died and got stuck in the sack. So yeah, I will do a video. I've got so many videos I need to do. I will do a video on um, assisting pig farrowing um, and let you know what to do um, when your pig is farrowing as well. So getting down to the figures, I've got my handy dandy piece of paper where I've done the calculation. So I'm going to go off if your pig has 10 piglets, so 20 piglets a year, and I'm going to work it out for our four sows, it just makes it easier because um, I've put in the cost of feed for the four sows and the one boar. Okay, so the cost of the pigs and the boar when we bought them in the first place was $550. Um, we buy two pallets of feed 
pellets of feed makes no sense, but I mean we buy two tons of feed per year, um, $1,200 a pellet, so that's $2,400 for the feed. That is just on um, pellets, like hard feed, not any of the milk or anything like that, because we're lucky and we get our milk, veggies and everything for free. Um, petrol, I've put in $20 a week for 1040 although we could probably put $10 a week, um, but I did 20 to be on the safe side. Straw, um, I put $70, we just bought five bales, thought I'd put that in there anyway. Um, so that all comes to 4060 is your costs. So your costs aren't actually that high. Now when we're selling our pigs, so you get 20 piglets a year, sell them at 140 each. That's $2,800 per pig, and we get $11,200 for our four sales. So if you minus the expenses off that, we end up with $7,140 for the year, which is pretty damn good, I think, for only having four pigs. And that um, was based off only 10 piglets. And in future, I think these will be quite good producers and we'll have a lot more piglets. So if you figure that out over the 52 weeks a year, it's 140 bucks a week that you get. So it's not, I mean, it's not a money, huge money maker, you're not making millions, but I mean, everything helps out, right? And the workload isn't that high, I don't think. So for $140 a week, I definitely think it is well worth it. Now, of course, I didn't add in the setup costs. Everyone's um, profits are so gonna um, vary depending on where you get your feed from, how much feed you gotta um, buy, what type of pigs you choose to breed, when you choose to sell them. So yeah, this is so like an overall broad as um, kind of the figures that we make, but I hope it gives you some sort of idea of what we're making just with four pigs. In future, we do plan to expand our pig rearing business. So making seven grand just from having four pigs. We hope to double our amount of pigs, so have eight sows, even nine sows in one boar, depending on if we can get the feed. That gives us almost 15 grand a year, which I think is quite good just for like a side hustle um, on our 10 acres. We do also have our own um, garage business, which I mentioned earlier. That's our main source of income. And I also rear calves as well. And I'll be doing a similar, a similar video on our calf rearing shortly. Um, we're getting calves next month, so there'll be a lot more upcoming videos on my calves and calf rearings and all calf rearing and all the economics behind that. So yes, that pretty much wraps up this video. I'm sorry if it dragged out a little bit. We went off topic in so many places, but that's just because I'm so passionate about my pigs and rearing my pigs, and I just can't wait to share all my information with everyone here. I hope you all got some valuable knowledge out of this. I hope you all have a better understanding and an idea of what kind of money we make rearing pigs and whether that helps you make the decision if you want pigs um, on your lifestyle block. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe if you want to see more future content about our pigs and calves and everything else that we've got going on here on our 10 acres. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in another video. Thanks, bye.